Welcome to Fred and Amy's Math Shack. Shack. Welcome to Partial Fractions, Case 1, Denominator with Distinct Linear Factors. I'm going to ignore this title at the moment, but please write it down. I will come back and talk about what all these things mean. To start with, I'd like you to pause the video and try and simplify this. That is, write it as a single fraction. So what we did last lesson is we said we can basically put it over a common denominator. So the first one, I can times top and bottom by x minus 2. And the second one, I can times top and bottom by 2x minus 1. Now these are now the same, so I can combine them. Um, that should have been a that should have been a one. Sorry. Okay, my writing's going to be a little bit messy here. Apologies. Okay, then I can expand this out. So I'm going to get three x minus six plus four x minus two all over the same thing equals seven x minus eight. And this is now my final answer. So I'll write it out again x minus 2, 2x two minus 1. Okay, and that's it. I've simplified it. Right, that's just a little recap on what we did before, but it also leads us into this lesson because we know how to go from the left to the right, but now we're going to learn how to go from the right to the left. So this is known, so going from left to right, uh, right to left is known as splitting into partial fractions. Um, how do we go back? Now in this case we know what the answer is but if I change it to like a 9 or something it would be completely different. So have a little think. How could we, how could we do this? How could we go from this thing on the right and split it up into these partial fractions? Okay, the answer is that we can make a bit of a guess. We can say, let this thing on the right be identical to a over 2x minus 1 plus b over x minus 2. I know they're going to be numbers. Um, actually, there are cases where this they're not numbers, but that's going to be further cases. Um, and all I need to then do is work out what a and b are. I need to somehow show that a is 3 and b is 2. And that's what we're going to be looking at. Notice this thing on the left has on the bottom distinct linear factors. That's where this bit of the title comes from. They're not the same. Okay. We'll see in later lessons we might have a squared here. So they're not distinct because I've got two roots. Okay. Not today. So basically, hopefully this explained partial fractions. I want to go from an algebraic fraction all combined into separate ones. This is called splitting into partial fractions. And my denominator has distinct linear factors. We're gonna cover two methods for how to do this. It is worth covering two methods. So these methods, and this is, so what, okay. I didn't talk much about the identity. It's important to put the identity there because this is saying it's true for all x. It's not an equation. Equation is just true for a few values of x normally. I mean, it can have infinite solutions, but this is true for any x. So we write this an identity a bit like sine squared plus cos squared is identical to 1. Um, and if we have other partial fractions, we can do a similar sort of thing. Okay, we're going to look at two methods, substitution and equating coefficients. Let's get into it. So method one. Um, I think I'm going to write it out again, 7x, I might even say method 1, let, I should say let, 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1, x minus 2, be identical to a over 2x minus 1 plus b over x minus 2. 
Now what we can do is we can multiply through by these things on the bottom. I can multiply everything through by 2x minus 1 and x minus 2. So this implies that 7x minus 8 is identical to, um, okay, because when I times top and bottom by 2x minus 1, x minus 2 on this left hand side, it's just, well not top and bottom, just the top by 2x minus 1, x minus 2, it's just going to disappear. And then I'm going to get it over here, I'm going to get a 2x minus 1, x minus 2 over 2x minus 1 plus b 2x minus 1. I'm just showing in a bit more detail over on the right hand side what's going on because as we see these cancel and these cancel and I could, I will from now on go this um, more quickly. I can write that 7x minus 8 is identical, I'm going to always write that, a x minus 2 plus b 2x minus 1. Now I don't know, x is varying, I don't know what a and b are, what am I going to do? How am I going to solve this? And the key is in the identity. This is true for any value of x. So method one is that we can substitute in a value of x. What would be a sensible value of x to put in? Or you could put in anything you want, but sensible values would be if we can make this thing here zero or this thing here zero because that will eliminate one of the unknowns. So let x equal 2. Then 14 minus 8 will equal, this is an uh, equation now, not an identity because I'm using a particular value of x, b times 4 minus 1. Okay, because there is no contribution from a now because I've done 2 minus 2. I've just not I've not put it in. So 6 is equal to 3b and b is equal to 2, which is good news because that's what it was at the start. We've managed to solve it and obtain uh, that b is 2. Okay, we've got to do a little bit more. Let x now equal, so I'm going to I'm still, this is my key uh, identity. What should we let it equal? Well, I want 2x minus 1 to equal 0 now. So that's going to mean that x is equal to a half. Then we're going to get that 7 times a half, which is 3.5 minus 8, is equal to a, uh, a half minus x. So, oh, sorry. That should be a half minus 2. And then there is no contribution from the b. So I'm going to get that uh, 3.5 minus 8 is minus 4.5 equals a half minus 2. You can use a calculator for this. I'm just doing it without. Equals minus 1.5a. So a is equal to 3. And if you can write down, hence, you can write a conclusion now. Hence, um, 7x minus 8 over 2x minus 1, x minus 2 is identical to 3 over 2x minus 1 plus, plus 2 over x minus 2. We have used the method of substitution to um, separate this thing on the left into partial fractions, these distinct linear factors. Brilliant. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And it's not too bad. A bit of practice will be there. Why have I written danger here? Now, this is something that occasionally just bothers me when I look at this method. And I'm just going to talk about it. And I don't think you need to lose sleep over it. Uh, and it's just something to ponder. Now, we've gone from this thing here to this equation, and then I've let x equal 2, for example. But that is a bit of a weird thing, isn't it? Because if you look at the original equation, if I let x equal 2, then neither side is defined. So 
I don't think we really need this danger, but it's a bit weird, isn't it? It's like, whoa, what is going on there? Um, it's just something maybe to I want you to be aware of because I think I've I've learned this method and no one ever told me about that. But uh, when I look at it, it just freaks me out a little bit. I think I've got my head around why it's okay. I think like you know we can sort of imagine taking the limit really close to two and then we'd be okay. Um, but it is a little bit of a strange feature. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. I'm going to show a second method for this. I'm not going to do two methods every time, but I want you to see a second method that may in some circumstances be advantageous and could also be advantageous in later questions. So let's do it. Equating coefficients. Okay, method two. We are again. Gonna, we're going to start with exactly the same process. So 7x minus 8 is going to be identical to ax minus 2 plus b 2x minus 1. Now, I can write this as 7x minus 8 is identical to ax minus 2a plus 2bx minus b and therefore it's identical i can factorize out the x it's going to be a plus 2b x minus 2a plus b so i've separated it into the x parts and the non-x parts let's write this bit out again um, because this is an identity i can equate coefficients. This is something you do when you look at the binomial expansion and things. It must be, because this is true for all x, it must be that this 7 equals this a plus 2b because it's true for all x. So if I just look at the x coefficient, I can write down that 7 equals a plus 2b. And then if I look at the technically the units or the x to the 0 coefficient, it must be that 8 is equal to 2a plus b. I'm not worried about the minus because it's minus 8 and minus this. I've just taken the positive bits. And what we do, what we've done is we've created simultaneous equations. So this means that 14 equals 2a plus 4b. What I'm doing is I'm making the a coefficients be the same. So I'm going to write this one out again, and now I can subtract them. I can subtract the left hand side to give me 6, and I can subtract the right hand side to give me 3b, and I will get that b is equal to 2, and I will get therefore um, 7 equals a plus 4, and so a is equal to to three. Therefore, um, I'm again going to get three here and two here. I'm not going to write that out in full, but we get the same answer. Okay, so two methods, substitution, equating coefficients. Which do you prefer? Um, I think I prefer substitution, but there are times when I just do a little sneaky bit of equating coefficients to to make life easier, we'll see, and I'll, I'll sort of talk about when uh, it will make life easier later on. But those are two examples, and they've been talking for quite a while 15 minutes, uh, 14 minutes I am talking about this. Uh, two examples on partial fractions, but hopefully that makes sense. We're going to do another two examples, but you might want to try them yourselves first. Right, example two on splitting into partial fractions. Let's go straight into the sort of method that I would expect to write down. You're more than welcome to pause the video and have a go at this and then compare. So I'm going to do the first one by equating coefficients. Um, let's, it's up to you though. You might just want to stick with one method. Although I would say, you know, why not, why not just mix it about a little bit to make sure you can do both. So let 1 over x plus 1 
2x plus 3 be identical to a over x plus 1 plus b over 2x plus 3? Of course, we could use different, we don't have to use a and b, but that's just, you know, it seems to make sense to do that. It implies 1 is identical to a 2x plus 3 plus b x plus 1. I times through by the denominator and I note I, I don't need to write it all down. The x plus 1 is going to cancel with when I times them by the x plus 1. And so these are sort of going to swap around basically. Okay, let's keep going. So 1 is going to be identical to 2ax plus 3a plus bx plus b. I'm doing equating coefficients at mem equating coefficients, remember, so then my x coefficients are going to be 2a plus b with an x, and I'm left with uh, 3a plus b. Okay. Um, I can just say coef x, it must be that 2a plus b is equal to zero because there is no x coefficient on the left hand side. And then x to the zero, if we just look at the constant terms, we're going to get that 3a plus b equals 1. I've got um, simultaneous equations here, so actually I can uh, subtract them. I'm actually going to subtract, I'm just going to rewrite this one again, okay, cross it out, because now I've got the larger numbers on the top. So I can say that a is equal, so these are gonna these are gonna cancel, a is equal to one. Okay, and now I can um, put it back in to two a plus b, two a plus b equals zero. So it must be that two plus b equals zero. So b is equal to minus 2. And we're pretty much there. Therefore, 1 over x plus 1, 2x plus 3, um, yep, is identical to 1 over x plus 1 plus, sorry, not plus, we can, instead of writing the minus 2 in the actual fraction, I can just put it there and write minus 2 over 2x plus 3. That's it. Note, you could, if you have time, like take the right-hand side and just check that you get the left-hand side by adding your fractions. Um, I suppose, yeah, I think that, but, you know, if you're confident, if you get nice integer answers especially, you can be pretty sure you've got it correct. One more example, and yes, this does fit into uh, our topic of partial fractions denominated with distinct linear factors. It's just now I've got three distinct linear factors. So how are we going to do this? Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to let 12x over x plus 1 2x plus 3, x minus 3, be identical, wait for it, a over x plus 1 plus b over 2x plus 3 plus c over x minus 3. So this method can simply be extended. If I have four distinct linear factors, I'd introduce a d as well and so on. Okay, this this method um, can yeah works really nicely in that way. Okay, so now I can multiply through by the bottom. So I'm going to get that 12x is identical to a. But now when I multiply through by the bottom, I'm actually going to get uh, two brackets over here. There's a bit more going on. So x minus three, and then plus b. Okay, I've got 2x plus 3, so I'm going to be left with the other 2. 
and then plus c and then again now I'm going to be left with the first two x plus 1 and 2x plus 3. Okay now I could equate coefficients here but this is strongly non-advised um, so actually that's why I said I tend to go with substitution. If we equate coefficients we'll have to equate the coefficients for x squared for x and for x to the zero and we're going to get three simultaneous equations with three unknowns. It's just it's just unnecessary. Um, again, there are times when it can be beneficial. Actually, we'll see in later cases that's true. That is the case, but I've introduced it, but I'm not going to use that method now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do my substitution. So let x equal, and this is why the substitution really works, because when I let x equal minus 1 and get rid of this, I also get rid of this. So I'm going to get that minus 12 is equal to a and then I put minus 1 into here and that's just going to give me 1 and then I'm going to put minus 1 into here and that's going to give me minus 4. So I'm going to get minus 4a equals minus 12 and a is going to be 3 and that was so much quicker than anything we could do with simultaneous equations. We're going to repeat and do similar let x equal, let's, I always do the nice ones first, so let x equals 3. So that's going to mean that 36 is equal, so this is going to disappear, this is going to disappear, c, and then we're going to get a 4 when I put 3 into here, and then when I put 3 into here, I'm going to get 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. This is good because 4 times 9 is 36, so I've got that c is equal to 1. Finally, let x equals minus 3 over 2. Okay, this one's the trickiest one, so I think I need a full line for it. So this is going to imply that 12 times minus 1 and a half, that's minus 18, is going to equal... And this is going to disappear, this is going to disappear. I've just got the b term, b. Okay, I'm going to get minus 1.5 plus 1 is minus a half. And then I've got minus 1.5. Do you know what? I'm going to write all this out, this bit. Minus 1.5 minus 3. So minus 18 is equal to b times minus a half times minus, oh, do you know what, I'm just going to write minus 4.5 and use my calculator, I think. So I can do minus 18 divided by minus a half, 0.5. That gives me 36, and then I can divide that by minus 4.5, and I get minus that looks good. B is equal to minus 8. So we're basically there. Um, I can write down, do you know what, I've run out of space, haven't I? Okay, I'm just, that working should be there, but I'm just going to delete it so I can fit in my final answer. Whew, okay, and you do need to be able to deal with this. You won't be asked in A level to deal with 4 distinct factors. I mean, it's kind of more of the same. It's just more substituting. But hey, maybe I'll put a challenge question on it in. So therefore, 12x over x plus 1, 2x plus 3, x minus 3 is identical to 3. It's always important, well, I would strongly advise at the end that you write it out. If it just says, like, find the values of A, B, and C, and it gives you this at the start, then fine, but I'd strongly advise that you just write down the final. Oh, this should be a minus. Oh, dear. Okay. I'm nearly there. So bear with me. 3 over x plus 1 minus 8 over 2x plus 3 plus... 1 over x minus 3. All right, quite a lot of me talking in this lesson, uh, but we've looked at partial fractions, case 1, distinct linear factors. We've looked at when there are two 
distinct linear factors. We've looked at when there are two, uh, three distinct linear factors. We've solved it using substitution, which, as you can see, is a really quick and nice method in general. Um, we've also looked at equating coefficients, which, you know, is worth learning about. And this is us now.